Well, hello everybody. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Saturday night, uh, three Saturdays until Christmas. So, time for another Christmas card. And tonight we are going to use the gorgeous Joy of Noel bundle and some beautiful Winter Meadow DSP. So, let me just be sure it looks like I am transmittalating, I hope. Yes, there we go. It's finally figured it out. Hey, Rocky. Hi, Karen. Hi, Jean and Renee and Linda. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, it's warm here too. It's like mid 60s right now, I think. And uh, that's kind of crazy for this time of year because last week, actually three nights ago, it was 29 overnight. So we just can't keep up. There's no keeping up. Hello, everybody. Appreciate you guys coming. Alrighty, so this is our card for tonight. It is a fun fold. It's called a Z fold. You see how it looks like a Z? Sort of. There, Z like that. A backwards Z like that. And it's really quite simple. It's two or three uh, extra scores, an extra score, a couple of extra pieces of cardstock, and you're ready to go. And I have used the uh, Joy of Noel. This is one of my very favorite dies. Now, let me just tell you what, if you don't have this bundle, this is a retiring set, all right? So when it runs out or when the catalog ends on the um, 3rd of January, then it will be gone forever. So don't be sad. Get this if you don't have it already. Hello, everybody. I appreciate you guys coming. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Everything will be on my blog tomorrow. And so you can just watch and enjoy or kibitz or however you like to do. So we're going to start with a piece of pretty peacock cardstock. It is four and, or yes, five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to make two cuts, the, or two scores. The first one is going to be at two and an eighth. Hardest part here is being sure you use that light gray uh, blade. And then we're going to go at four and a quarter. All right. And that's about it. Can put this little dude away. All right. So we're going to create the Z by folding the four and a quarter inch score as a valley and the two and an eighth inch score as a mountain. Okay, so there's mountain valley, all right? And y'all, that's it right there. There's your Z fold, done. Now, I have some pieces of the Winter Meadow DSP and I did not do a mat on this. So this is a little bigger than my normal size. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm just going to adhere it to the card, to the back of the card, thank you guys, to the back of the card with some liquid glue. My friend Carol Buckaloo did this fold the other day, couple, maybe last week for the Happy Ink and Thursday blog hop, and she did a video using this fold and reminded me how much I like it. So I pulled it out. So that's the back. And then I have two more pieces of the DSP that are coincidentally the same exact design, but I am going to adhere one piece with the uh, foliage up, and then this center panel, I'm going to go ahead and adhere it with the darker backside up. All right, and that was the next hardest thing is remembering to do that with the backside up, right? Because otherwise this is just kind of like watching cement dry. All right, so if you guys are expecting a catalog from me, they did go out today. I was a little concerned when it was two o'clock and the mail lady hadn't come yet. I'm not saying that it's her because she's our regular carrier and she's usually really good. But sometimes I think they don't have something for us and so they just psh, go on by without checking to see if I have anything. But you know, <laughs> she didn't today, but I was starting to get worried. Okay, so there is our card base ready to go. And I have done a little deckled die cutting here. So I am using the next to the second from the largest is my Moody Mauve mats. And then the next size down is um, going to be basic white for my inner liner. And then I have a different design of the Winter Meadow for the card front. Okay, so it's these two together, matte and either inner liner or card front. But between them, I am putting a blueberry bushel panel. On this one, I took the um, opportunity to cut the sentiment out. 
so that I could, um, you know, save a little cardstock, save a little weight, save a little thickness. When you're doing a fun fold, sometimes that matters. Me, I just automatically stick two stamps on everything I do, but this is a good way to preserve. If you forget to do this, don't panic. Just use a different mat for, or a different piece to cut your die cut out. No problem at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid glue to adhere this to blueberry bushel. Bonnie, I did not, I have still not gotten my free catalog from Stampin' Up! yet. So I'm, I, I think the, maybe the post office is looking at it. I wish I thought I would get a sale from that, <laughs> but I don't know that I would. All right, and then I'm going to adhere this with liquid glue to the aforementioned Moody Mauve panel, like so. Okay, now, before I adhere my, um, my sentiment, my little die cut sentiment, I am going to use, oh, where did you go? There you go. I'm going to use my Clear Wink of Stella. Thank, my friend Rosie suggested this to me and it was an awesome idea. So thank you for that. I was vacillating between this and Shimmer Pretty Peacock letters and it just wasn't good and I couldn't figure out the right thing to do. And she's like, well, how about your Clear Wink of Stella? So that was a great idea. So I'm just brushing the Clear Wink onto each of these um, die cut letters. And it gives a very, very subtle shimmer, okay? So it's not in your face by any stretch of the imagination. And it does take a little bit of a second to dry because I'm being kind of generous with it. And I may even go back and do another little bitty bit so that it really shimmers. It's very hard to see this in the camera. I almost bet you can't tell that it's shimmering, but I surely can. Ah, thanks, Carol. That was... All right, there we go. So there we have some shimmery letters. And the best way, so you're going to let want them to dry just a little bit. We'll kind of set them out in order here. The best way that I discovered to do this, we're just gonna do a diagonal across here. So really kind of the best way is to set up your end letters first, like so, okay? And that kind of sets the stage. It sets the stage for your diagonal and it sets it for your spacing. And then I kind of used the width of the, of the letter. So you see how this letter is here, and then this edge is about lined up with that, just about. I mean, it's not exact, but it gives you kind of a kind of a starting point, okay, to kind of keep things in line. Okay, so now I will use my liquid glue. Uh, Um, hmm. Coloring poinsettia is well, cool, Marilyn. That's fun. That's it's a perfect time of year for that. All righty. So I'm going to use a little liquid glue to adhere all of these, and just try to kind of keep them where I had them. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm going to do the N and the L so that we can keep our spacing good. Hey, Sue. Appreciate you coming. And I'm glad you like the tip. Y'all ready for Christmas? I mean, I I feel like I am, but it's kind of like I said this morning. It's almost unnerving to think I've got everything done because I feel like there's another shoe to drop going, ha, ha, ha. around the 21st, your brain is going to go, oh, no, oh, no, I didn't fill in the blank. So hopefully that is not the case, and it's just that thing like, you know, when you go on vacation and you get about 46 miles away from home and you're like, did we shut the gate? I, I don't remember shutting the gate. 
That's, that's what it is for us. Sometimes it's people who don't think they have shut off their iron, but for us, it's, um, you know, Anne, I don't. I have, I did try it several years ago and it just, it just didn't work for me. It made me kind of crazy. So, so I do this more, <laughs> uh, a little less techie, I guess. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I recommend that you close the card up like so and set the panel so that if you didn't, if this wasn't a fun fold, it would be centered on the card front. Okay, so like so. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put some liquid glue here and adhere your panel. Easy peasy. And you can either put the liquid glue on the fold or on the back half of the panel. Either one works just fine. You don't need a ton because you don't want it squishing out the back there. All right. Yeah, I have another batch of cookies I might want to make. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know. I may or may not get them done. They're kind of all, they're kind of uh, optional, but I, I, I'd like to get them done. I got the stuff to do them, so I'm hoping I'll do them. Okay, so that's done. I'll set that there. Let me go ahead and put some sequins on. I have some pretty peacock sequins that I am going to adhere here and there. Not that one. I don't know how that one got stacked up on a, on a pink. That wouldn't be good. I mean, a pink would be pretty, wouldn't it? Pink would be pretty. Now let's go down here, maybe. Yeah, like that right there. And then we'll do a couple over here. Like so. And that's our card front. Okay? So, easy and peasy. Yeah, I, I want press and seal to work for me, but my best is just to take a picture of it and then hope for the best. Okay, now on the inside piece, we don't have any die cuts, so let's just go ahead and adhere this piece to that piece. Nicole and Joel. Oh, that, yeah, it is. It's like the, it's like, uh, what, what did they call, um, oh gosh, Brangelina, Brangelina, Bra Brangelina, right? Wouldn't that be, Noel could be the clues of Nicole and Joel. All right, there we go. Oh, cool. Jean, I appreciate that. I'm glad. I hope they liked it or will like it when they get it. Okay, so for our inside, we're just going to go very simple. And I'm going to try to do something very efficient. This is going to be amazing. You guys are going to be blown away by the efficiency. Well, actually, you'll be much more blown away by the efficiency if I can find the envelope that I know I set out here. It was right here two and a half seconds ago two and a half seconds ago. I'm just saying. Oh, there it is. Phew. Phew. Thanks, Lenny. Thanks, Marva. All righty. Now, what we're going to do, what we're going to do, if and you want to, is I'm going to take this image. It's the kind of smaller swag from the Joy of Noel set. And I'm going to stamp it in the corner. Again, this is the, um, this one. So third from the largest. Okay, so first, second, third from the largest. And I'm going to stamp it in the corner in Pretty Peacock ink. And because I'm being all efficient and stuff, I'm going to do the same on my envelope. Like that. Why am I being efficient and trying to go move quickly? Because I had my phone on my charger, and my phone, I don't know if it's my phone or the charger, but it looks like it's charging, and it shows the little lightning bolt, and then when you look away, it drops the lightning bolt. So it isn't actually charging. So when I thought I was picking up my phone with 100% charge, I picked up my phone with 32% charge. So I really would like it to not decide to shut off in the middle of my video. So I'm kind of rolling along here a little bit. I have my dark blueberry bushel stamp and blend and I am coloring the, well, the blueberries. That's what I would call them. 
See, did I get all the blueberries there? Looks like it. And then I'll do the same on the envelope. Now remember, when you are using blends on an envelope, you need to do one of two things. One, you can just be very light-handed with your blend. Or two, you could do what I sometimes do, which is take one of the acetates from a stamp set. So from, you know, the photopolymer sets, the acetate, I just keep those. They're big, heavy, and you can use them as window sheets or you can use them like this to protect the back of your envelope. Because if you get too heavy-handed, you're gonna get bleed through and then you're not gonna be happy. You won't be happy with that, I'm just saying. All right, so there's that. Hey, Cecilia. Yep, you can look for that uh, V on my website. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, and then this is the shaded spruce. These are all in dark, and I'm gonna use that for the leaves, okay? And if you wanna use different colors, you sure can, but these work with the DSP. You could use the lights if you prefer the lighter a lighter look. So just have fun with it. This is a real pretty image. And I really love this color palette. This is the most gorgeous paper and I am so happy that it's one of the things that's going to be carrying over. I believe what that's gonna mean is that like some of the things we have now that used to be in a catalog, they're not in a catalog anymore, but they're available online. Okay, so that's done on the envelope, and now I'm going to um, go ahead and do the inside liner, like so. And I'm not putting an inside sentiment, and I'll tell you why. I was going to put Merry Christmas, because I know that people for Christmas, they prefer that. But it's a very small panel, and so... Um, I just didn't find easily, I didn't quickly and easily find a sentiment to use to put on there. So if you want to put stamp Merry Christmas in here, absolutely do that. If I was going to do it, I would stamp it in blueberry bushel. That's the color I would pick for a sentiment on this card. Trying to decide if that's, I'm gonna call that a, it may not actually be a leaf, but I'm calling it a leaf, okay? It's a leaf, it's now officially a leaf. Okay, and then the final thing is, I know there's probably not any soft succulent holly out there, but this this is. So this, not soft succulent, ooh. You see, that is what happens. You revert to what you knew. This is not soft succulent looks like soft succulent, feels like soft succulent. In fact, it's Lost Lagoon, okay? Still, there's probably no Lost Lagoon holly either, but it's okay, because I like it. It looks pretty, and it works really nicely with the color palette of this card. So therefore, it's good. And it's so wintry and pretty, isn't it? It kind of makes you feel a little chilly, doesn't it, looking at it? I know, I know, you feel cold now. All right, here we go. All right, so that is done. And now we'll do our, um, we are going to do the envelope. Remember, I have my um, acetate inside there to kind of protect it. And here's another little tip when you're coloring an envelope. When you have images that go right up to the edge, be real cognizant of the fact that it can bleed over to the back. Now, you can decide whether that bothers you or not. Um, usually what happens is I'm like, don't, don't let it bleed, don't let it bleed. And then it bleeds a little. I'm like, well, you know, it'll be okay. <laughs> the post office is probably not going to take real good care of it anyway. So if I'm lucky, the worst thing will be a little bleed over to the back of the envelope. But I do try to be careful so that it's not you know, huge. It's not huge. All right, only one more. And then I'm gonna show you how to put the, uh, the inner liner in so that you can kind of hide it. And then we'll be done, Skay. And I keep glancing over to see if I'm still <laughs> transmittalating and my phone hasn't gone off. Okay, so we'll take that out. And while I have it sitting here, let's just go ahead and put our envelope flap on. 
I know. It's just a beautiful, it's beautiful paper. I mean, they just knocked it out of the park with this paper. It makes you want to get blueberry sprigs to put on your centerpiece at Christmas. It really does. Or just all winter long, really. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? I wonder if you can get fake blueberry sprigs like at Michael's or something. Since it's a little hard to get blueberry foliage in the, in the actual winter. I mean, at least not in this hemisphere. All right, so this is just the world's easiest fussy cut. Quick around the edges here. Take the opportunity to practice turning your hand, turning the paper with your holding hand, not turning the scissors. Okay, so there's our envelope. Now, let me show you. We're going to adhere this to, this, to our mats, our double mats. And we're just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. All right, like so. I like the um, deckel straight deckel mix. That's kind of pretty, I think. Okay, so here's how to do this. Now you can do two things. You can just put this like this and kind of eyeball it and be like, okay, whatever it is. Or you can close your card and flip it like so. Okay, so you have it open with the card front facing down. Then take your inner liner and lay it right on top of the card front, just like that, okay? And we're gonna put some liquid glue on here. Remember, you do not need a ton of liquid glue, people. If you're using a ton of liquid glue, it may be why, if you don't like liquid glue, it may that may be why. Okay, so now I have the liquid glue on and I'm just going to make sure that everything is lined up, edges and edges, and then I'm going to close this like so. Okay, there we go. And in theory, if I haven't let it move, you have a completely hidden inner liner and you open it up and there it is. Now you, now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. All right, and y'all, because we already did the envelope, we're done, Ske. Yes, you need to get some, I don't wanna show that, that's an ink pad. Yes, you do need to get some of that. Thank you so much. I'm not sure who 13141516 LDI is, but thank you very much. Alrighty, so there you go. Got me two more Christmas cards. Yay, me! In case, in case the thing that comes to me on the 20th is, oh, you didn't send a Christmas card to fill in the blank. I hope you appreciate it, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and that I will see you on Thursday for another project. I don't know what, but you know what it will be? It'll be a look at the, something from the new catalog. I promise you that. All right, guys, have a good. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.